A line cast is an imaginary line drawn between two points in Unity's world space. Any game object with the collider can be detected and reported back if it touches the line. In this tutorial, we will explore one application of line casts, as well as how to set up the colliders for other objects in the scene. In this prehistoric scroller project, we can see the T-Rex has two lines drawn from it a long yellow line and a short red line. These lines are purely for debug purposes to give us a visual representation of the line cast start and end points that are calculated programmatically. As the scene begins to move, we can see the T-Rex's behavior change when the yellow line touches the player's box collider. His behavior changes again when the red line touches the player's box collider. Let's take a look at the script to see how that's happening. The line cast only requires a start point and an end point. This is different from the similar ray cast, which requires a start point and a direction, but no definitive end point. Line cast's optional parameters include layer mask, minimum depth, and maximum depth. For more information on these parameters, visit the documentation linked in the description below. The Raycast Hit 2D reports the collider results and available information from any collider the Linecast has hit. It is extremely important to note only the first collider hit will be reported. Be mindful of the Linecast's starting point. If it starts inside a collider, only that collider will be reported. In the prehistoric scroller, I have the Linecast's start and end points update with the T-Rex's position. So the line cast will move with the T-Rex. The next part of the script controls the T-Rex's behavior based on the information returned by the Raycast Hit 2D. If the yellow walk line cast hits a collider on an object named player, the T-Rex will begin walking towards the player and the walk animation will play, if he is not already walking. It's important to point out there is a null check wrapped around the if statement. Because this is in the update loop, if the line cast is not touching a collider every frame, the raycast hit 2D will return null. The if not null check makes sure it is only called if the yellow line is touching a collider. Also, the walk line cast is only drawn if the attack bool is false. Let's look at the attack line, the small red line. If the attack line hits a collider on an object named player, the T-Rex will switch to attacking the player and the attack animation will play, if he is not already. This bit of code sets walk to false and attack to true, which will prevent the yellow walk line cast from being drawn. Now that you understand how it works, let's watch it again. The T-Rex's behavior switches from idle to walk when the player's collider touches the line cast. When the attack line touches the collider, the yellow walk line is no longer drawn and the T-Rex switches to attacking. Great! Now let's look at how the colliders are set up. In the prehistoric scroller, the player object never moves and the player collider is considered static. No rigid body is attached. The T-Rex does move and would be considered a rigid body collider. Because this project does not use physics, the rigid body is set to kinematic and both colliders are trigger colliders. A trigger simply detects when one collider enters the space of another. It reports the event and not the physics. This means the player is actually a static trigger collider and the T-Rex is a kinematic rigid body trigger collider. It sounds more complicated than it is, and Unity provides an awesome cheat sheet for determining if one collider will detect the other. For a thorough explanation, visit the documentation linked in the description below. That's it for the tutorial. Line casts are an awesome, easy way to detect colliders in Unity, and there are an infinite number of possible ways to use them. See you next time.